Welcome back guys. Today we are going to be talking about straight bets, parlays, money line, bankroll management, over under, the four easiest bets to make, and bankroll management. Um, basically what's going to happen today is I'm going to talk about all these numbers over here on the side of the screen. We're going to go over it. We're going to go over types of bets, the easiest bets to make, the bets with the best payoff, the riskier bets, all that good stuff. So when you walk into a casino to bet college football, you're going to come up and see something like this. This is Horseshoe Tunica last year. Okay. It's going to have, it's going to look like this. It's going to be front and back. It's going to have a bunch of numbers, bunch of teams, bunch of names, all kinds of shit. It can get very confusing. It got very confusing for me the first time I went. First time I went, I was like, I feel confident. I got this shit. I picked up that sheet and I was like, what the hell is all this shit? I, you know, I sat in line. I got there about 30 minutes before the games kicked off. By the time I got to the counter, it was like five minutes before the games kicked off. And like, go ahead. And I'm like, uh, Oklahoma minus six. And they were like, dude, this is going to take forever if you do it like that. Give me the number. Go with it. Spread. Money line. Over under. Let's roll. Let's make this quick. So this is going to make it quick for you. It's going to make it simple for you. If you get nervous, don't feel bad. I get nervous. So over here on the right side of my screen, I just gave an example of Oregon versus Utah, which was the Pac-12 championship, I believe. Um, as you can see, Oregon has a 103 next to it. Utah has a 104 next to it. Next to Oregon is the line column. It's 46 and a half. And next to Utah is minus six. Then you have the money line plus 200 for Oregon, minus 240 for Utah. And then over on the right of even that, you have first half over under at 21 and a half. And you have Utah minus three and a half at the first half. Lots of numbers, lots of shit. I understand you get confused. We're going to make this easy for you, okay? So the 103 and 104 is just the number associated to the team. That way they don't have to type out the whole team name. They can just put 103, enter, it pulls up Oregon, and you can go from there. Easy numbers, super easy numbers. The first number in line next to Oregon is 46 and a half. So that's going to be the over-under for the game. If you think the combined score of the two teams is going to be under that, you can bet 46 and a half under. So it doesn't matter who wins. It doesn't matter if they score two points or 45 points. If you bet the under and it's under 46 and a half, you get paid. Now, if you want to, if you think they're going to score more than that, you can bet the over. Again, it doesn't matter who wins. It doesn't matter what the scores are. As long as they score combined more than 46 and a half, they put the hook on it as a half. So you can't tie. Um, you're either going to win or lose. So Utah has a minus six next to it. Minus six is the point spread. So if you think Utah is going to win by more than six, you would take Utah minus six. If you think Oregon is going to either win or stay close enough to Utah within six points, you would take Oregon plus six. Uh, normally that pays 90% since this is a straight bet. Most casinos are a little different. Uh, but yeah, so some will say, if you look down the next little line, it says some will say minus six, minus one and 105. All that minus 105 means is you have to spend $105 on a bet to win $100 back. The same with plus six, minus 115. You have to bet 115 to win a $100 bet. It's pretty simple. You don't really have to pay much attention to that just because you can bet $32. You can bet $33.50. It's going to say on the ticket what your payout is for that bet. So you really don't have to worry too much about that. Now the money line. Money line is just no points, no bullshit. Who's going to win the game? That's all it is. So money line, if you bet on Oregon, since they were the underdog, it's plus 200. What that means is if you bet $100, you will win $200. So if you bet 100 your ticket, and you win, your ticket will come back at 300 You get the original $100 bet back, and you get the 200 for the money line. Now jump down to Utah, it's minus 240 So for Utah, if you were just going to pick them to win the game out flat out right, it would be you would bet 240 to win 100 not the best for your money, but there are some money lines where you're like, this team cannot lose. Even though it's a little bit of money, it's a pretty safe bet. I don't like the money line uh, unless I'm parlaying it in a two or three team parlay where I think the underdogs are going to cover. That way the payout's just as good. First half on the right, it's got 21 and a half under over for minus 115. Again, you would have to bet 115 to win 100 for the under or the over. Actually, that's for the under. The over, I don't know. But uh, so the first half combined points, 21 and a half. Again, there's the hook. They put the hook there, so you either win or lose. And then the over, un, or no, the point spread was minus three and a half Utah. So if you if Oregon's a good first half team and you think Oregon's going to keep it close or be in the league going into halftime, you would take Oregon plus three and a half. Uh, it would pay probably 90%. So 
Uh, moving on down, money line we went over, over under we went over, first half bet, we already went over those. So that takes care of your straight bets, your over under and your money line. We just knocked out three of them that quick. Now you're going to parlays. I love parlays. All my bets, 95% of my bets are parlays. Two team parlays for me are the, love them. So normally what I do is I pick five teams that I think are gonna win and I just round robin, two team parlay them all together. It's 10 bets, of course, for a parlay, so you do a two-team parlay. If one team wins and one team loses, you lose the bet. So what you need is both teams to win. Now the payoff is two and two point six to one. So if you bet a hundred on a two-game parlay and it, both teams win, you win two sixty for the hundred. It's a very good bet. I like it just because the payout makes sense to me. And if you pick five teams, you only have to go sixty percent. I know 60% is a high number. Uh, people in Vegas say 58% and higher, you're making money, that's good. But you only have to go, so you need to win three of five. Is all you need to win, three of five. So if you win three of five, you made money. And we'll go down that. But as you can see with the parlays, each one pays a lot more. Three team parlay pays six to one, 14 parlay 11 to one, five team 22 to one, and it goes all the way down. I just stopped at 10 team because I haven't seen too many people do more than 10 teams. 10 team parlay bet pays 720 to one. So you put a $10 bet on a team te 10 team parlay, let me get that out right, you would make $7,200 on $10. It's pretty crazy. It's astronomical. You might as well get hit by lightning. If you get struck by lightning, go do a 10 team parlay because that's probably the odds of actually winning a 10 team parlay. Now to go to the example here. So five straight bets at 200 each. So your total bet would be a thousand and you win all of them. All five teams win, which is a really good day. You win $900. Again, you win 90% of your bet on straight bets. It's not a bad day. You're going home with almost an extra thousand. But if you two game parlayed all the five teams together, that would be a thousand dollar bet and you would win 2,600. So we're talking about $1,700 difference in the betting way if all five teams win now there's a flip side of this you're like hey seventeen hundred dollars more i'm gonna always parlay here's the flip side flip side five two hundred dollar bets you only win two right so you're gonna win 200 your money back then you're gonna win 180 so each ticket you win is gonna be 380 so you're gonna win two of the five 380 times two is 760 dollars so you only lost 240 for the day and you only got you only picked two of four two of five that's pretty good this is the issue with parlays that a lot of people hate, and it, it bit me in the butt last year. Two-game parlay, you only win two of the five games, you're only going to win uh, one ticket. So that's a $100 ticket, paying 2.6 to 1, so that's going to be $360. That is it. That is all the money you're bringing home. So you lose $640 winning the same amount of games, straight bet versus parlay. So the upside is a lot higher, the downside is a lot lower. Straight bets are more... If you're worried about fluctuations and fluctuations get to you and you just want to make a straight bet and be done with it, straight bets are the way to go. If you're starting betting, I would say start with straight bets. It's simple. It's easy. If the team wins by that number, you win. Uh, also, money line's pretty simple. Uh, parlays are a little difficult, but it's not bad. It's just you, you put two teams together. Both teams have to win their games and then you win the money. It's 2.6 to 1. That's the only reason I do it. Uh, the way I see it is I need to go 60%. If I go 60% for the season, I made money, which is not bad in my eyes. So we've gone over parlays. We've gone over straight bets, money line, over, under, all that good stuff. So now we're going down to bankroll management. Now bankroll management is huge. This is how people get in trouble. This is how I've had friends get in trouble. This is how I've known when I go down there and bet, I've seen many people screwing this up, okay? Bankroll management is before the season starts, you need to set aside X amount of dollars. No matter what, you do not go over that X amount of dollars. If you make it a thousand and in week four, you've already lost a thousand dollars, you do not keep betting. You are done. It is cut off. So bankroll management is, and the example I have here, college football is basically 15 weeks with the buys and everything going in. You normally have 15 weeks to bet. Uh, week 16 is normally just one game, Army versus Navy, and the bowl games start. If you're into bowl games, uh, I pick and choose my bowl games. I don't bet them all like some people, but that's just me. So let's see, once you set aside and you feel comfortable, so let's say you set aside $6,000. That's a lot of money. I'm not saying set aside $6,000. 
That's your own preference. Whatever you feel comfortable losing is what you need to set aside. Because gambling, you might lose. It's a possibility. It might happen. It probably will happen sometimes. It's just what's going to happen. So let's set aside, you set aside $6,000. Well, there's 15 weeks. So that means you can bet 400 a week, every week. And you can bet every single week of the 15-week season. So you can bet 400 each week and go all the way down. Even if you lose the first 14 weeks, you still have $400 for week 15 to bet. I am slightly different. I My bankroll that I set aside is good for about five or six weeks. Mm, yeah, I'll say five weeks. So if I lose the first five weeks, I'm done. I'm not betting the rest of the season. I've lost all the money I can. I am, I'm out. So it is very important to stay in your bankroll. Do not exceed your bankroll. Do not bet more because you had a good week. Do not bet less because you had a good week. The best way to bet is to bet the same amount each time. So you like this, you like team one, two, and three, bet the same amount on one, two, and three. If you only let one, if you only like one team one week, that's up to you. You can bet your whole week on that, or you can bet just the same amount, and that way you don't have to worry about it. And you can put that extra money to another week where you like four teams or five teams. So it's very important to keep bankroll management. That I can't say enough. Bankroll management is huge. It'll stop you from going in debt. It's going to stop you getting in trouble. It's going to stop you getting divorced. It's going to stop you drinking and driving. It's going to stop all these things because that shit happens. Okay? So, episode two, we have gone over all the simple betting. Uh, there's prop bets. There's teasers. We're not going to get into that. Um, these are the bets if you're starting off you should make. I'm not telling you what to bet or how much to bet. That is up to you. Just don't get in trouble. Don't exceed your bankroll. Stay within your bankroll. And you should have a good season. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe and there'll be more to come. Uh, my next video, I'm going to start breaking down teams that I think are going to make the playoff. Each video is going to be a one-team breakdown. I'm going to look at season, returning starters, all that fun stuff. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed this video. Subscribe, like, and the, other, the next video should be coming out either tomorrow or two days from now. So take care and thank you for watching.